Wait. It's going to yell okay. at everybody. Yeah. There we go. Hello, I'm Mystery Rosa Marcella, Order of Defense. I am going to try and talk about how to be an ally for neurodivergence. If I can get the slide again. So, just a short agenda, introduction of who I am, my qualifications, what a neurodivergent is, look at the spectrum, and types of accommodations, which is where we're going to go. My mystery, Rosa Marcella, my pronouns are they, them. I am actually diagnosed ADHD, autism, and PTSD, and all the coexisting neurodivergence that go with it. Um, in real life, I'm actually a certified peer counselor, so I deal with clients that have um, borderline and personality disorders and schizophrenia, so I deal with mental health professionally, along with substance use disorders and recovery plans. Uh, so what is a neurodivergent, or who is? I got this off the University of Washington, which I really enjoy their research. Um, terms such as neurodiverse and neurodivergent were introduced in the 1990s by autistic sociologist Judy Singer as an alternative to deficit-based language such as the disorder. Singer highlighted notable strengths of many individuals in the autistic population that include abilities to focus, recognize patterns, and remember factual information. A neurodivergent person refers to a person on the autism spectrum more generally to someone whose brain processes information in a way that is not typical of most individuals. These people may have learning disabilities, attention deficits, anxiety disorders, o OCD, and Tourette syndrome. Through a neurodiversity lens, such conditions reflect different ways of being that are our normal human experiences. That's just the broad definition of what a neurodivergent. It is a very huge spectrum um, of neurodivergencies. Just some common ones are like ADHD, autism, um, dyscalculia, graphia, alexia, and praxia, which all are the difficulties of math, writing, reading, or coordination, which I love running into walls. Um, bipolar, borderline, and PTSD are the most common ones that really affect how our brains react in the world. PTSD is the hardest because it can have a lot of triggers and um, things that you kind of have to just be really careful about how asking and talking to a person on how they want to be around. So as you can see, neurodivergence has a huge spectrum. And I use ADHD and autism as an example that there's very little differences between the two that actually make you ADHD and autistic. Um, a lot of neurodivergents have problems in social environments. But what I loved about the SCA is we love to hunt for dopamine, so we love the fact that we can have multiple hobbies in one hobby, and it's and it's totally acceptable by everybody. I also like the fact the SCA that when we have a special interest and we love the info dump, that is totally acceptable by everybody. So we have less. We do and we do ma don't mask as much now that we're getting a little bit more aware of neurodivergence. Um, it's been nice to unmask even more and have more, like I do a um, self-care blog on auntiers, friends, and citizens to kind of be like, hey, this is how you can take care of yourself to avoid burnout and stuff, which everyone kind of can do. So already talking into it, here's some ways you can accommodate. Ask the people. We ask for feasts. like hey, what type of food allergies do you have? Um, I've, I have I kind of started advocating for what I need because no one was really, I can't expect you to advocate for me or to understand my accommodations. Like, there's going to be times I'm just going to want to disappear or take a nap because I'm overstimmed. Um, other things, just like with trans and stuff, you do know they have a neurodivergence. Don't announce it publicly unless have given permission. I'm very open about it. 
but it just kind of like a lot of people have to stay hidden for safety reasons. Um, but something that was recommended to me was at your own baronial meeting is where you can ask what other type of accommodations are you looking for? Like we pay attention, we're trying to pay attention in on tier, like flatter surfaces to get wheelchairs around, places to charge CPAP batteries. And now I'm really advocating for uh, mental health, like uh, some things that we've kind of come up with with some accommodations are sensory reduction zones. So kind of make a quiet area where hotels um, on tier actually at 12th night this year, last year, because I was in the hospital this year, never mind, uh, actually created a quiet room in the hotel. They reserved a whole spot. Um, so that way people could take sensory breaks and stuff. For everybody, not just neurodivergents, ask if you can hug or touch because you don't know how their mindset is that day. But something that did get suggested, um, and on tier, uh, we actually have a guy that created pronoun buttons with on tier symbol, and the, our DEI council are taking them to be able to have an easy access free pronoun buttons at Kingdom events. So I actually asked them to make no hug buttons or nonverbal, might switch to nonverbal buttons and stuff. So that way people can know and kind of have a better understanding. It's like, okay, kind of keep your distance, ask. All my friends now ask because I had really bad PTSD last year and I just was not a touching person at all. Like I just, I was like, please. And I reminded people, it's like, remind, and advocate. So there's a lot I've done on my own, but this is just kind of things that other people can be aware about. Um, fidgets, crafts, small crafts and stuff really help, like suggesting to them learn to sew or something small. So that way it's like, it's a medieval fidget. Um, keeping our hands occupied has been great and stuff. So the, these are just some simple accommodations. And is there any questions right now before I kind of, because this is why I knew I talk very fast. <laughs> Has anyone else have anything that they've added to accommodations or how they've helped with neurodivergence in your kingdom or barony? Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Nothing in the chat yet. We had a fair amount of overlap in the session earlier today about um, <clears throat> about sites that were or were not um, um, welcoming, not necessarily within the SCA, but but the geography that that site is located in. And the topics came up about having that quiet place, having the uh, the, the 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 place where people can get away for a little bit and um, and maybe be less stimulated and and making that a, a normalized things at events. And mm -hmm. we're in the West where the culture is, you know, with the exception of the, the deep winter where it gets all the way down into the forties around here, um, we're mostly a camping culture. So it's, it involves things like having a, 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 a safe tent at an event. So that's just one of the things that, that I know of. And you've got some good suggestions there. And, there's more than one way to implement them. So really interested to see what different kingdoms and different cultures do with it. I, I've i actually have, since advocating, I've actually have some friends that have moved on to the RV age um, that are like, or some friends with tents that they're not gonna use during the day that have told me like, oh, if you need to do, get away from all the sensory, come and use our space. Um, so a lot of it, I don't know how much, like my barony has really tried to set up a quiet space, a safe space that only certain people know where it's at because it's like, especially people with PTSD or can't be around certain people or just need to escape from all people. Like my barony, Lothanor has been really aware of that because there is a lot of 
um, self self advocating open about their neurodivergence kids and adults. So it's a very welcoming barony. So that's where I was trying to go with this class was like seeing what other kingdoms were trying to do, like you said, because it's like, unfortunately right now, most of the nation I can't even go to because I'm trans, but what can we do at least where we're welcomed and everything? So yeah, that because we think about the other accommodations sometimes like charging stations for CPAPs, uh, trying to get flat surfaces for wheelchairs. Our kingdom has made baronial, a design for baronial benches that have people be able to sit when they need to. So it's like, and sometimes I do hear people saying like neurodivergence gets missed a lot because it's, it's been such a taboo for so long, like most other um, things that we've been trying to not be taboo and it's, it's going, it's, it's getting around. It's just, it's definitely interesting to see like when 12th night did that or in, at kingdom level, like, okay, because we, we have camping and hotel events because we get, not that we get too cold, it's just a lot of rain. <laughs> so it, it's it's kind of nice to know like before any of this advocating what people were trying to do um so yeah that's why i kind of wanted to start getting a class going now realizing i need to add more content because i talk really fast <laughs> um but there there was some simple um one of the pelicans i talked in oregon was like suggesting a type of necklace to show like different part of the spectrum but someone was worried that that necklace might not might get mixed in with all the awards and stuff so it might not be as visible so trying to find something that's like visibly showing that i'm a no-touch person or i can go nonverbal. it's not you it's definitely me um there's an app uh that um to do crap where to go a speech assistant that i try to uh it's a free app um that i try to for people that do go nonverbal, it, it helps you build uh words and stuff at, and even in my own peerage during council meetings i've asked somebody to read my notes if i have really something to say and i've gone nonverbal. so there's a lot of self-advocacy that i've had to do to kind of create a safer spot and stuff um but there's also a lot of things that people can just be aware of that can just kind of be like oh they are trying to accommodate for me and stuff that i realized like going back to the simple accommodations that I had, like a lot of my sub training and substance use disorder training that I've been doing, or any other peer training in Washington, they always bring us fidgets. It's it's awesome. They bring pipe cleaners. They bring coloring pencils. Um, they've even brought actual fidget toys just because they know the type of population they're working with. So I was thinking almost like a kid's table. You could almost do the exact same thing that we do for our youth as just here, here's some things you can fidget with cheap from the dollar store um, because we just like our hands keeping busy. Even right now I'm playing with a quarter because I fidget um, and things, but they're just more of the awareness. Like um, I have headphones on here because yeah, a lot of people, we actually have some youth down in Olympia area that wear headphones. So being aware that the headphones mean that loud noises are sensory problems for them. So be careful approaching them and don't yell at them. Try to make yourself visible um, and things. Like I have, I have little ones called loops that they're like 30 bucks. So they're a good suggestion for people with not a huge budget um, that help with my sensory issues. Uh, there's other thing out there for accommodation tools that I can do to accommodate. But the big, big thing that I think really, really helps 
as a place where you can go desensitize, get away from all the noise, get away from all the visual noise, the, the sound noise, because they are two different things. I get overwhelmed by too much clutter in my room, and we call that visual noise, and that, uh, let alone just loud noises around us. So. Other than that, so these are some books that I've read already. I have quite a few more that I've been reading over the last couple of years. I've been studying my own personal mental health for the last three years and what, how to best get through um, an SA event because I realized a lot of things that I was doing to cope with drinking and other things. So this was a, this was a journey for myself to really learn how to do an SCA event again because I'm three years sober and been really, really learning about myself. So Divergent Mind, really good book. Um, it kind of goes into how she's late diagnosed autistic and how the world kind of really changed perspective once she figured it out. Are you, ADHD, showing, are you showing the simple accommodation slide or do you have a list that you're showing? should have a list that I'm showing. This is book suggestions. Simple accommodations. Well, okay, there's that. How about now? It's been frozen here. Frozen for everybody else or, or is it moving? My preview looks like I have the book suggestions. Yeah, it's still frozen on my end to the simple accommodations. Well, technology is so much fun. <laughs> Computers, they make our life easier. How about that? One second, still coming. Double click to enter full screen is the information we're getting. So try double clicking to enter full. There we go, book suggestions, thank you. There we go. I'll start over. Divergent Mind, really good book. Another person that kind of went until their mid 30s before they found out how neurodivergent they were. ADHD 2.0 really explains ADHD brain, I think, amazing. Um, the best quote I got in there is that we have a like F Formula One race car in our head with bicycle brakes. So, all this information going on. Uh, by far my favorite book so far is Unmasking Autism. But not only was it talking about autism, but it talks about how our gender is wrapped up in autism for a lot of trans folks and just had a whole bunch of different stories from other autistics and gender non-conforming people. So these are, I think, great books for people to kind of start off on. There's some other books I've read that were more to, definitely geared towards autistic people like how to speak to earthlings. I loved, I thought the book was hilarious because it went through all the human emotions, went through how neurotypical speak to how and analyze the situation because it's like, it, it was a very interesting book, but not, it's definitely something more for me. These are the references, uh, Washington, W, Washington, that. University of Washington has its own autism research center that they even have a letter that self-diagnose is viable because you're going to be more of an expert about yourself than most experts are because it's your life. So I really been enjoying UW's articles that I grabbed from there. And then where I got the Cleveland Clinic was where I got the different types of neurodivergence and where I got the graph for the, the circles, which I just totally forgot what graph that's called. Anyways, but thank you for coming. I definitely and hope I can get more content and build this up later. And, but this was just a good, good starting point that I thought for trying to get accommodations for neurodivergence. Your sign says, your slide says, thank you to us. Mm.
thank you to you. Uh, and uh, the email I put on there, the Queer Squirrel, is where I get, I've been doing a lot of my trans uh, interviews on Twitch. I do a lot of this to try to get more people's stories out there and stuff uh, about once a month and switching from third Thursday to fourth Thursday. That way I have friends that aren't at a baronial meeting and can actually watch it. <laughs> because yes, the SCA influences my schedule. <laughs> Is all. A good thing. Thank you, Maestri. I will stop recording, I think. <laughs>